Do, 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 sketch Talks. Hi, I am Inkrose, and welcome to Inkrose's Sketch Talks, the only show on the internet that does sketching and talking all at the same time. I'm lying, there are a lot of other shows on YouTube that do that, but I'd like to think that I'm unique. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I would hope so. Maybe I inspire some other people to do a similar sort of thing, and it leads to a big YouTube trend that ends up just getting annoying and cliche, but hey! Who knows? <laughs> That's the internet for you, right? Well, anyway, today's topic is my first fandom, aka how I got into Star Wars. That's pretty much the theme of the video. Now, you might be hearing my birds twittering about in the background. Just ignore them. Everyone tweets. It's not like it's a new thing. Just leave them alone. Don't make fun of them. They're very sensitive, very soft feathered. Anyway, here we go into the story of how I got into my first fandom, aka a story of evil and tragedy. When I was a young girl, I liked to watch cartoon shows on- Bird, shut up, you're ruining the tone of the sto- of the story. When I was a young girl, I would watch cartoons on the television. No other child ever did this. I was incredibly unusual for my age. <laughs> then, one day I went to a video rental store. Do those even exist anymore? I don't know. Netflix is pretty much the new god when it comes to videos and YouTube, I suppose. But I went and I saw this DVD in the kids section that was Star Wars The Clone Wars. And it had like, you know, Anakin and Obi-Wan on the cover. And I was like, whoa, this looks pretty cool. I've never watched anything related to Star Wars before. At fact, in fact, at the time, I actually thought Star Wars was originally a book series before it became a movie because I had this uncle who would read the novelizations of the movies. So because he would read those, I thought they were originally books. When it turns out, it's exactly the opposite. Who cares? I was dumb. I didn't know anything about Star Wars, really. Except that there was a character called Princess Leia, and I thought she was cool because she was a girl character. <laughs> so, I saw the Clone Wars DVD and I was like, Whoa, it's a cartoon! I'd like to watch that! So, we rented it, and I went home and I watched it, and I was freaking out, man. I was like, I have no idea what's going on, I don't understand the context because I've never seen any of the Star Wars movies, but that's okay. This Clone Wars movie is cool because it's animated, it's a cartoon, and I like that way better than live action stuff. But what really got me interested in it was that there was a female Jedi! Wow, Princess Leia wasn't a Jedi, at least I didn't think so. But here, there was this character called Ahsoka, and she was this young girl, she was maybe a little bit older than me at the time, and she was super cool. She had like these this green lightsaber and she was like an alien but she looked super cool and I loved her design and she was Anakin's Padawan and Anakin was pretty cool too and Obi-Wan was pretty cool. Everyone was pretty cool. I liked that. And so that was the start. That was the seed of fandom first birthed into my heart at that very moment when I watched that movie. And after that, I begged my parents, I was like, Mom, Dad, I really want to see the Star Wars movies now. Can we please watch them, please? So we went back to that video rental store and we rented like every single one of the movies. I don't, I don't know if we rented them all at the same time, but we rented, I know like the first three. The first three as in the original trilogy. And I asked, wait, why are we doing these ones? I thought... Why aren't we watching the first, second, and third movies first instead of the fourth, fifth, and sixth ones? My parents just looked at me and they were like, No, we're gonna do the fourth, fifth, and sixth ones first. The first, second, and third ones, nah, you can watch them by yourself later. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, why? They're not good. They're not good. I said, well, okay, I'll probably like them though. So we went home, and as a family, we watched the original Star Wars trilogy, and it was incredible. And from that moment forward, Ink Rose was a Star Wars fan. Of course, then after that, I went and watched the prequels, and I was young. I actually really enjoyed them, mostly because of the world. 
I wasn't like super into Anakin or Padme, but I really liked Obi-Wan, and I just really liked the world of Star Wars. I just, I loved the world building. I especially loved the Jedi. I thought they were cool, and I liked actually Attack of the Clones. That was the reason I liked Attack of the Clones the best. Not only because it was the thing that came right before the Clone Wars, but also because the ending of Attack of the Clones was great because there were there was a whole battle with the battle droids and the Jedi, and there was all these cool Jedi like Shakti and Luminara. I don't remember if Luminara was there. I think she was. Uh, Ayla Secura and Mace Windu. All of them were going, and they were fighting all together as a Jedi group. It was awesome. And that's one of the reason I liked the prequels. Now that I've you know gone back and watched them again, I can definitely see the issues, but I still cannot help but love all of the world building in those movies, and I also just love the concept of them. Obviously, there's problems with directing, there's problems with acting, problems with script writing in particular, but I love the concept of them, and again, I love the world building, the art direction, everything. Great great stuff. After that, I went and I would watch the Clone Wars series itself, rent DVDs of the episodes, because that's before I would really go online to watch them. Though later on, Star Wars did actually start posting the episodes on their website. I think it was like a week after they aired, maybe? But they would post some of the full episodes, so as they aired, I would watch them on the Star Wars website, because at that point, um, I didn't have, like, actual TV anymore. We decided to just cancel subscriptions, whatever, you know. At that point, it was like, okay, well, the internet is now our TV. It was when Net Netflix was first blossoming into existence and becoming great. So then, my best friend, Catherine, I will actually link you to her DeviantArt page, because she's great. She introduced me to DeviantArt, <laughs> and that was the real start of fandom as I know it, because I was obviously fans of stuff before Star Wars. I was a fan of Kim Possible, totally. That was one of my biggest childhood loves, but it was definitely Star Wars that was my first online fandom, and that's because she introduced me to DeviantArt. So then she helped me out, like, we're making my profile and setting it up, and then I would upload a picture of Lego minifigure of Ahsoka as my profile picture. And then that was the start of it. I looked through DeviantArt for Star Wars groups to join. I would upload my fan art where I would redraw screen caps from Star Wars of my favorite Jedi like Ayla Secura and Ahsoka, Barasafi, Luminara and Dooley. And I would post tons of pictures of Lego figures because I really liked photography when I was younger. I still like photography, but I was really into it when I was younger, especially toy photography. So I would set up my minifigures in different little situations, usually in funny situations, and then I would have in the description like a little story to go along with the little pictures I would take of them. So that's actually a lot of my start on DeviantArt was toy photography and then just sketches of favorite characters that I liked. That was before I got into the Pony fandom. The Pony fandom changed everything for me in terms of how I did my artwork, but this is talking about the Star Wars fandom, so I'm going to continue with that a little bit. I was super into it. I really enjoyed the fact that on DeviantArt, I could meet people who were also into what I liked, and I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of kids who are just getting into DeviantArt also relate. Wow, there's actual people I can meet online who are super into what I like. They even have some of my favorite characters, too. So I had a few friends on DeviantArt that were also really into Ahsoka, and so they would make fan art, and I would be like, Yeah, you go! This is great fan art! Yeah! And then they would go to my fan art, and they'd be like, Yeah, this is great! You have great fan art, too! And I'd be like, Thank you! Hey, did you see that new episode? Oh, yeah! Wasn't that amazing? Totally! Yeah! Did you like that? I liked that too. Oh, and this part was great. Yeah, I agree. That was my favorite part. We would go on and on just talking about episodes <laughs> through comment sections. And uh, I will go back and look at some of the stuff I wrote. I think this was 2011 when I set up my profile. I believe it was 2011. It's like six years ago, almost seven years ago. God, it was such a long time ago. I'm going to have to do a video actually going through some of my old 
DeviantArt stuff because man that's nostalgic that's before I moved to Texas obviously oh but I remember one of the things I really loved doing when I was younger was collecting the like six inch Star Wars action figures okay maybe not six inch more like the four inch Star Wars action figures I had this Ahsoka one I had an Anakin I had Obi-Wan I had a bunch of them I, I remember when I went to Disneyland one time, I went into the big, like, Disney shopping store they have near the front, like, when you step out of the, um, the tram. When you step out of the tram, there's, like, this, this huge set of shops that are, like, really big and they're sectioned off, but there was a Star Wars section that I went to, and I was like, wow, look at all these Star Wars action figures, these are the, just the type that I'm collecting. So I actually bought a Kiari Mundi, Kiari Mundi uh, figure there. Even though I didn't even like his character, I just got it because I wanted to collect him. <laughs> but I ended up like, he ended up being my least favorite figure because I didn't really care about Kiari Mundi. He was just like the big forehead guy. <laughs> but I do fondly remember going to Disneyland and getting him there. So that's why I still have him, I think, is because I just liked having that memory of going to Disneyland, having a fun time, going on star tours, and thinking it was the best thing ever. I had a lot of fun memories at Disneyland, but that would be something for another video, obviously. This is getting a little off track, but the action figure of season three Ahsoka came out, where she was in her brand new design, brand new outfit that I adored. But the thing is, when I was younger, I didn't even think of trying to buy it online. I just wanted to find it out in the wild. So I would go to all these stores and try to find this figure, but I could never find her. I would just go through all the Star Wars action figure sections looking for her, but I never found her. And that broke my heart when I was younger. I, what? I didn't think of going online and trying to find a store near me that had her. I did not know that was a thing. I just kept trying to find her and kept failing miserably and that situation has never resolved itself. I've gone online recently trying to find one just to satisfy my inner child, but uh, I think she's like expensive now, unfortunately. I might have to look it up again. But at least, hey, there's a new Ahsoka doll coming out in the new Star Wars Destiny's doll line and she looks amazing and I'm definitely going to get her to satisfy my inner child. She's even the right design that I wanted, so there's that. But that was a little big thing for me. I would play with my friends with the action figures and we would have a lot of fun times, especially using our Transformers figures because after I got into Star Wars, I got into Transformers majorly. Mostly Transformers Animated, Transformers Prime. I really loved those shows. Catherine and I, my friend, we would, uh, <laughs> we would watch them together talk of fangirl about different Transformers episodes, different Clone Wars episodes. Ah, it was good times, good times, simple times. Simple times before I found out about Shipping Wars. I found out about Shipping Wars mostly from the Pony fandom. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, I really miss those days in terms of how much I actually enjoyed fandoms, because these days, fandoms are so toxic. I'm probably going to make a video about that, but I don't really enjoy fandoms anymore like I used to. I envy some kids these days because they're they're able to go into fandoms with uh, kids their age and then just enjoy things. I don't know, like Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, I know kids are really into that. <laughs> And the stuff you're gonna make, you're gonna look back at and cringe at, trust me. I definitely cringe at a lot of the stuff I made when I was younger, but I still appreciate it because it led me on the path to where I am now. And I think I'm in a good spot right now. But, you know, I always try to get better. But Star Wars fandom was definitely a big leap for me. My first official fandom. And I am still in the fandom. I still love Star Wars to death. I will probably talk a little bit more about what I specifically like and talk some about Rebels, maybe. I actually do have a particular thing in mind I want to talk about when it comes to Rebels. 
I will see you all in my next video. I probably will release one on May the 4th about Star Wars related topics. I'll see you then. If you like these kind of very casual videos where I just kind of talk about stuff that I think, then go ahead and uh, tell me in the comment section what you thought and maybe what topics you'd like to hear me do a sketch talk about. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon. Bye! Well, big news, I now have a P.O. box sort of thing. It's not exactly a P.O. box, but it works functionally the same in this case. It is the address listed on the screen right now. If you're interested in sending me some random stuff I can do in an unboxing video or whatever, feel free to send it here. I don't mind. Also, if you want to support these videos on Patreon, the link will be in the description. Here's a list of my current amazing Patreon supporters, some of whom have been supporting me for a long time, and I really, really gotta thank you guys for that.